This video is going to show you a solar grandmaster nightfall on the Halo layer. For those who just want to see the run, let's give the timestamps available to you. Other than that, I can show you my setup and all that stuff. So this video is going to focus on getting the triumph itself for the gilded sail. That is it. It isn't focusing on getting platinum rank and you know double nightfall rewards and all that stuff. To be honest, if you are a person that's found for loot in this, then I wouldn't be doing it solo. Okay, if you want to actually farm this nightfall, get yourself a team, do yourself a fair favor, because it's hard enough as it is doing it solo without, you know, without any headaches. A lot of bugs in it, it's going to put a lot of people off. It almost put me off with the amount of bugs and the amount of stuff that goes on in it. At, at times it's ludicrous. At times it's a bit too much in my eyes, but I still cover these grandmasters because I'm a PvE person. And what do PvE players do? Well, they play the pinnacle content in their category, just like a PvP play, PvP player would when they're do, you know doing their stuff. I'm still going to cover grandmasters, despite how I feel about them at times. Certain ones, you know, um, but I'll still cover them. I won't cover another Hollow layer this week, though. This will be the only one, and then next week it's Lake of Shadows, and then you know the rest aren't so bad. Okay. I know Corrupt is pretty tough, but it's been changed. Uh, people are forgetting how much the change is substantial. But as I said, we'll focus Hollow Lay and it's just focusing on getting the triumph. It's not double, it's not for, for loot. Okay. So, the mods. The two important mods are Festering Rupture. When defeated Scorn Stalkers, they spawn mini screaves. Income and Stasis and Splash Damage is increased. The rest are the general mods that we'd always see chaff and stuff. Boom unlocked, match game. Champions are barrier over, uh, unstoppable overload. We are on a hunter setup, night stalker with the pathfinder, vortex grenade, gambler's dodge with the exotic chest plate, the six coyote, so we get two dodges, which means we get more uptime on smoke bomb invisibility. We have a protective light build on with <coughs> blast radius, so uh, when we get a double kill with a grenade launcher, we get charge of light. We also get charge of light via taken charge, which is must work orbs for us. Powerful Friends, which gives us um, plus 20 mobility for free when paired with an arc mod. So you need you, you need that piece to be arc. Particle deconstruction on the cape with bomber. So every time we dodge, we get great energy, which I feel is always really good in this. The amount of times you're dodging, bomber is just it's just so good. This is what I recommend on the Night Stalker is there's a couple couple of components to it, and these are the most important things about it. As I said. Make your cape solar. That's number one. Number two, make your six coyote void, not arc or solar. You may get some benefit from arc, but the biggest benefit you will get from resistance values in this is void. Know that I've tried void and arc substantially. I've tried them all week. I've tried void and arc. I can tell you void is the one to go. I would also say probably go void concussive dampener instead of double void, but you can go double void. There's benefits to the two, and I'll explain... The differences between those in the rumble you pick and choose it's either void concussive or double void overload bow and stop fusion for the uh, champions um the next thing i would say is resistance you you want a bit of resistance on the hunter um at least tier six with some void damage resistance will enable you to survive a one shot off a sniper what it is with the scorn snipers is they fire two bolts which is counted as two sniper shots Meaning you still get one shot. So the resistance is tier 6. You must meet that requirement. Unless you want to play the game of avoiding snipers. Which you know you can technically. If you know exactly what to do at every moment. But there is a bit of RNG obviously with anything. That you do in this game. But I would really strongly recommend that. And then high mobility. As much mobility as you can cram into your setup. It's pretty difficult because there's so many mods on taking up so much energy but if you can get as much mobility as i said you run a powerful friends weapon wise we're using the exotic grain launcher with a hard a arc bow with explosive head and then the corsair's wrath solar linear fusion rifle both with major spec on to deal with champions uh and also what i would say is if you don't like this setup of these two weapons then you can run a solar bow with threaded needle now, also, you could run Raids Regret, but I don't have a good roll. Um, but if you're going to do that, make sure you've got a solar bow on. But I haven't got a good solar legendary bow. It's the only solar bow in the game, which is a, a last wish. 
you need explosive head rampage doesn't cut it you really want a, an explosive head boss so i didn't so that's why i went the arc with the solo uh, linear which worked out decent high impact reserves was enough to get the job done not as good as Varble, but still okay that was our weapon wise um as i said using weaver hard as well ammo finders on the helmet and scavengers on the boots that was the setup i used for the hunter so with the run so straight away you'll be in uh, the tangled shot area the patrol area now even though it's a patrol area all the enemies can still one shot you okay um they deal massive amounts of damage to you so you want to be careful in this area <clears throat> if the scorn and stuff there just dodge the smoke dodge past them you're on a hunter that's you know the purpose of it if not you can just summon um all the way down now i'm going to summon all the way this first door if you're not confident in doing that don't do it Simple as that just do your smoke dodge you know you can skip this section this is why i'm saying i didn't get a platinum run and this was mainly the reason yeah because i didn't take the champions in this room um as there's quite a lot of them quite a lot of unstoppables and overloader too and um, but we're just going to just keep smoke dodging smoke dodging through it all the champions behind me will despawn however three lurkers now lurkers are the ones with the shields you don't fight many of them which is actually a good thing because they are annoying um three of those won't despawn but everything else will so when you come to this door this is where you're going to do a bit of your fighting for the start but not too much <clears throat> there's different things that you can do you can smoke dodge past all the enemies and fight from the back of the room inside which i do end up doing but i like to sort of optimize some of the stalkers because the stalkers they are the most dangerous enemy type or one of the most because two two reasons why is they can one shot you two different ways via a void grenade if you stand in it long enough uh and via the mini scrapes we're going to do some damage to this unstoppable as he's um looped over to the right side which is ideal that's what you want him to do he may not always do that there's a bit of rng to it but if he does take him from here if he doesn't uh you'll smoke dodge outside and take him from out out there which you'll see me do that it's not too much of a problem this this section here you will find there's a lot of <coughs> splash damage at the door just keep your distance from that door if you're going to actually fight from here a champion can't one shot you especially an unstoppable one but he can get you super weak i believe with dark resistance double that you can survive two or three shots but without you can't we'll smoke dodge past these enemies here there's two snipers up at the back of the map which we're going to deal with them via with a hod yeah <coughs> it just makes it easier because um they just they're just so deadly one with a hard shot will take a um raider you can shoot the explosive barrel for additional ammo one thing about these uh, these ammo crates and uh, not these ammo crates but the exploding barrels is that they respawn after so long in certain areas if you kill an enemy and do not tag the enemy you do not get ammo for that enemy if you kill them via the explosive barrel However, if you tag the enemy, then shoot the barrel, you will get ammo. So just know that if you're going to kill an enemy with the barrel, um, shoot them first if you can. If it's a sniper, you know, um, shoot the barrel wherever. A barrel won't kill an orange bar anyways, but it will, it will kill a red bar. Now, these are, this is your safe zone. This is, this is, once the two snipers are down, this is really, you know, where you can safely deal with things this overload you really want to just sort of um peak shoot with the bow because there's lots of cover in this environment like to my right there's this sort of um billboard thing whatever it is i don't even know what you call that but you can get a lot of cover from that if you do your strafe shoot with the bow <coughs> and you'll see me do that more often especially with the overloads because they're dealing arc we don't have arc damage resistance on which is a problem but void is so pinnacle that we do we do the void now with the um elevator pad thing whatever it is the plate take it a click before it reaches to the bottom why do we do that well that stops the that stops the tank from spawning in it means you can deal with all the ads the champions before the tank comes in this is huge as, as soon as i first started doing this i tested that just to see uh and he found out it was a thing so i was actually pleased 
Because this room is literally... <clears throat> it's so difficult, this room, when there's a tank alive, two unstoppables, lurkers that can one-shot you, all of them. They're not lurkers, stalkers, sorry. All of those can one-shot you. The snipers at the back of the map. Every enemy. But now the door, as you can see, is open behind us. Because we haven't captured the plate. Whether this is intentional, I don't know. But this is really good, so make sure you take advantage of it. Now we'll deal with the unstoppable to our left. There's two, one left, one right. They, they're up on their perches. Now the right one's fine. You can leave the right one up for quite some time. The one on the left, you can't. This is where you want to optimise. Taking you from the door. Using you with a horde if you can. Um, don't be frightened to use a bit of heavy on him though. Uh, as you're not going to need that much heavy. For the second one. The way I deal with it anyways, you don't really need much. <clears throat> really keep an eye on your ammo. Uh, you need you need plenty. Um, don't spam your ammo too much. Uh, you should get plenty with a hard dose as long as you've got ammo finders and things going. People say they don't matter, but those who say that, are they soloing GMs and things? This is where it comes down to, okay, it might not matter to one person, but it matters a whole lot to, to uh, some other person. Um, yes, the ammo finders don't matter in everyday play. They don't. Because all the ads are going down straight away. Your melting bosses, your one phase and bosses. All the ads are so easy to deal with. Not really tanky. <clears throat> so you don't need ammo finders. They're not needed. But when you start to up the difficulty in this game where all the enemies are really tanky, you need more ammo. It's as simple as that. And if you're on your own solo trying to deal with 20 25 champs in one strike, you could do with that extra two or three shots when you're like, oh, that you maybe didn't have. You can see I'm easily dealing with the second unstoppable just from this room here. We found Nade Energy up off him. But we're just going to get him finishable so we can deal with that. <clears throat> just make sure there's no more snipers up before you collect the zone. And then you're good. Once you spawn the tank in though, be sure that you've got Plenty of Weaver Hard, I would say at least 15, 16 shots. Um, as that's all you what you're really gonna need is your bow. You're gonna not need to you don't really need to use your linear at all. You can use one or two shots, but don't use much. There's a couple things to know about this tank room is this. If you stand behind cover um, where he can't really see you, he won't do his attack. Which he has two different attacks. He has a flamethrower attack and he has a, 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 um, a guided missile attack. If you're from range and he sees you, every now and then he'll do the guided attack. Um, but if you manipulate him like I'm doing right now, he won't do that. Or he's less likely to. The flamethrower one is when you're close, which you don't get close anyways. So all I'm doing here is you're using with a hardened bow, with a hardened bow. Just keep swapping from uh, each weapon type gradually take him down now why am i doing it like this well it's 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 very important and nobody's explained this if you break a tank's leg you get a spawn of ads snipers and all sorts and the big thing is is the door is shut behind you if you do that because once you capture the plate and you spawn the tank room the door behind you shuts <clears throat> now there's not many weapons like with a hard that will do this. This is why we're doing a with a hard run. This is one of the reasons it makes the tank section easier to clear. Because you are doing ta you are doing damage to the tank without damaging the legs. Don't whatever you do break a leg unless it's at the very end of damage where the tank's nearly dead. Because once uh, the tank bubbles and then regens, it's all, it, 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 you, you're going to have to manage doing. Um, with the tank, snipers, and there's a high chance you will die. I'm not saying you won't, but there's a high chance you'll die that race. <clears throat> I was just going for more with a hard ammo, which I should have picked up more than what I did, to be honest. Uh, the tank's literally one one shot now. He's dead. That's fine. Another important thing is why I didn't pick up any, uh, why I didn't use any heavy on the tank is because I need it. I need it for the next section. There's another unsuitable to deal with before the plate section. That's the tank room done. It's not very dangerous really because you can take everything from range and you can take it at your own pace as you just saw. Now you'll get um, four stalkers 
we've won unstoppable as I said. Um, if you don't take all the four stalkers, in time I will back up, back up to here. And this is sort of your safe zone, if you like. Now we can start, sort of do damage. I'm not enjoying the. I must enjoy, I must admit, I'm not enjoying the small hitboxes on these champs. <coughs> All the scorn champions, they seem like the the hitboxes is really small, almost like Vex. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Whereas hitboxes on some of the enemies, like uh, let's say Cabal, even Fallen, aren't bad at all. I don't know why they make their heads so small. It's sort of annoying. Now we'll do a Weaver Horde and a Grenade for to spawn kill all these adds. That just takes out everything. The, there's a Wraith type scorn, so the Wraith are these melee enemy types <coughs> that come at you with their solo move. Not very threatening, you can take them out with Weaver Horde. Shoot that barrel as soon as you come into this room, that will take out the Sniper and a bunch of adds. And then what you want to do then is take out the two exploding barrels. That then just, you've just dealt with all enemies apart from the two overlords, which is what you want. If you just op do little things like that, optimize, I did say if you, if you shoot an explosive crate, <coughs> you won't get ammo. But it sure, it sure doesn't have to deal with it easy because um, the overlord captains will make all the adds immune, making this part a little bit annoying. So what I'm doing here is, is waiting to find my time for me to take the overload on to my left. Um, the overloads will hide if you if you sit back. What I do is I take them from here. But I take the left one first and you've just got to hope the right one doesn't push you. If he does, you've got to retreat. <clears throat> this is where your concussive dampness is really going to help out. But as I said, I went for the double void instead. Which the double void has huge benefits, but the void uh, concussive has benefits where you get slight protection from most void sources, but you also get protection from champs. Whereas if you go in for the all void uh, route, means it's really good at the boss fight. You just need to get to the boss fight, and that's the that's the sort of pain part of it. But you can take everything so slow, apart from the boss fight, anyways. And you've got protective light. You can see I've got uh, protective light going now. It procced on this champ because I was I, I missed my overload bow shot on him, and he was able to sort of you know spam me with his attack. You want to lead with um, with a hard one grenade and then just keep stunning. The best thing you can do is jump up in the air as well. If you're dealing with an unstoppable on his own, if you jump up in the air, he can't hit you in the air. Because uh, his attack will just explode on the ground. If you can jump shot him, like so, it makes it a lot easier. And we get the final overload, that's great. We picked up some heavy. Now we're just going to go for one of the plates, doesn't matter which. <coughs> I like to take this right side for first, and then I'll do a wither horde, shoot the barrel, and it just takes some adds out. All we're doing is being efficient here, we're not rushing it, we're not being dangerous. Uh, once you've cl collected the plate a little bit, you back up. So basically what we're doing with this section is... We're just taking it bit by bit with the plates, because the adds are linked to how much progress you make on the plate. So, you can just take it as soon as you get an add spawn, back off. As soon as you get an add spawn, back off. But knowing what spawns you get is really beneficial, so on this phase I know it's just stalkers. Um. There's no snipers on this phase, on the next phase there is. Also the ads can hide. So this is why I've got my music down on Destiny, I don't play music on GMs. Why is that? Well because you can hear the ads. Play your SFX volume to 10. You can hear the audio cue of ads. Now these stalkers snuck up on me really, and took my protective light. Um, and they can hide in the plates as you saw. So, you're not always safe, always check under there, always listen for audio cues, because they have grunts, enemies, I know it sounds stupid, but they do, enemies have sort of grunts and things, and when you hear that, you know there's an ad somewhere, right, we'll spawn kill, um, 
the wave you just saw there, which is one raider, which is a sniper, and then three stalkers. Now, I know that one grenade took them all out, that's great. Then we'll go back onto the plate and we'll capture it fully. Now, when you capture one of the plate, whether it be left or right, um, you will get two captains. Not overload, they'll be uh, elemental. But what I like to do is to use a tether here. Tether the middle of the map. Now just keep tethering as much as possible, and then once your tether's over, try and get one of the captains. Because all that damage will be shared. We've got both captains, that's great. That won't always happen, that's fine, you'll just take them uh, at the end. Because now we've got a bunch of uh, stalkers to deal with. So talking about the mod, the mini scrape mod, um, <clears throat> what can happen to you is, when you kill the stalker, obviously you get a spawn of the mini scrapes. To combat that, Weaver Horde works well because it spawn kills those, right? It not only kills the stalker, but it kills the scrapes. However, if you just kill them with the bow or something, and it doesn't, explosive payload sometimes can, sometimes can't. Dragonfly can, I believe, as well. Um, they can go under the floor, you may think they're gone, and then they explode on you, right? So, as soon as the stalker's killed, if you haven't killed that scrape, and you're not sure whether the scrape's dead or not, just back off and retreat, because they do, they do detonate. They have a time where they'll just eventually explode, right? And that's what you need to rely on a lot, especially at the boss fight. The, at the boss fight, that is so um, something that you're relying on a lot because you're running and gunning at the boss fight. You really are. Uh, but here, it's not too bad because, as I said, you'll get a scrape. No problem. You're in control. All the ads are funneled to you, right? So it's not too bad. If you die in this section because of a scrape or something, it's more than likely your fault, unless the scrape is bugged out and you didn't realize it. I'm sure you'll know about it because everybody's been talking about it. <clears throat> I'll just finish off this final phase. Uh, there'll be no more phases. So you'll, for the second half of this plate, no more adds. And then you'll get the boss to fight, uh, spawn in. Be sure that you pick up all your ammo. Look at what ammo's on the floor, heavy wise. <clears throat> I'm full on special ammo, which is really good, and I've got plenty of bricks on the floor. But again, we'll retreat. And then we're going to um, take this encounter from here. So basically, in this game, a lot of adds have range drop off, and that means they can't hit you from a certain range. Think of it like a sniper, right? I know this might sound silly, but say a sniper has a range of 40 meters. If you're 41 meters, they can't snipe you. If you're 39 meters, they can. So being outside of that range, that's that, that. I'm just making up that number, by the way. But basically, that's what it comes down to, and knowing the range of an enemy. The ogre, the key target that you need to kill, the vengeful hand. <clears throat> he has range drop off, so he's not going to shoot me from here. Um, but he will if I get too close. Which you see that happens. If he starts to shoot at me, he can kill me in two two uh, bolts. Uh, if that if he hits me with one, which might happen, because I'm trying to weave a horn and things like that, and grenade, then I retreat to the left side, because the left side there's this cover. You can see he was hitting me there. I just strafe to the left, and I avoided all his damage. So mainly you want to prioritise weave a horn, and you can use heavy if you wish. But again, it depends on how much heavy you've got on the floor, which I had none. I think I might have had a brick or two. It could have been none, I'm not sure, but my heavy situation wasn't the best, right? But obviously I can get more ammo from all these adds that are spawning, which spawns are a couple of stalkers per phase, an overload on, on the first phase, and then on the second phase it's a second overload, which a bunch of ravages. If the ravages push, you can just take them, pretty simple. If they do their stasis freeze, and the best thing you can do is to jump in the air. And like I was saying earlier, if the ogre does hit us, which can happen at times, um, we can just strafe left. As soon as he does his second bolt, he can't hit us. Uh, and we can re-pick up an orb and re-up on our effective light. So, we're back to where we was. 
just got to be really careful with this ogre. Don't overcommit on damage. There'll be times I do as well, but I not to. You can use a tether for um, damage as well. You need to pick your time, though. Pick your best time to do that. Um, as this boss can sort of retreat left and right. Now, this super was a bad one. Um, the best time you want to super him is when he's in the middle of the map. Uh, what he'll do is he'll go through cycles. So he'll strafe left and right and there'll be pillars that he'll sort of um, go close to and hide. Uh, he'll put, he'll sort of, his AI is hard to judge, I'll be honest with you, at times um, it'll look like he's pushing up and then he'll back off and then he'll be pushing up and then he'll be going left and right. <coughs> it's a pain and it takes a long time this fight, even, even if you're not taking overloads and things. Which, I end up skipping the two overloads in this room, because as I say, um, the focus was just getting the run. It wasn't getting platinum rank or whatever. you. We're doing decent-ish damage. He's a third. We'll get our last wave of adds. Which we do like to take out probably most of them, because just the potential of getting ammo. It's just the potential of getting ammo. Um... I wouldn't recommend going to the boss fight with anything less than 10 ammo in your linear. Uh, there's a high chance you're going to get plenty of heavy at the fight because there's a bunch of adds. So you, you're not struggling for ammo, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't go too low on heavy reserves. The room that you pri previously fought in, ammo still stays there. If you had heavy here, you can come back for that and pick it up, which is great. So if that is a thing for you, then always remember your bricks. And it's worth just leaving them on the floor, because then you can go and grab them when you most need them. So right now he's congregating to the left pillar. As I said, there's left and right. <coughs> when he does that, Weaver Horde's your perfect uh, choice, because you can just sort of place it at the pillar. And he'll stand in the river hard, which is ideal. You can get him if you can get a body shot on him. That's great because it, it is difficult to do at times. If you are going to leave overloads up, um, they can make they can put a tether in and make the boss immune and all sorts. So if you need to shoot down a tether, do that. If you can't shoot the tether because it's out of your um, view, it's behind cover, then you just need to wait out. The tether will end. Even if you don't shoot the tether out, it, it, it sort of goes away after like, I would say 20 seconds or so. We're just safely doing damage from here. Now he's just going to go to the right pillar. We're just going to keep doing damage, chip damage from here. It is an annoying fight, this, I mean, it, it can be. But as I said, it's what gets the job done at the end of the day. Well, time's not too bad, we're 23 minutes in, so... It's not like it's been that long, although when you're doing these runs, you'll find that it just feels like you take taken forever. It's just the nature of the um, tanky enemies. It, it feels like you're just, like, hitting the enemy over and over, and you're just not getting anywhere. But you just need to be have a patience... <clears throat> Technically, we could invis dodge and, and all that stuff and hit him with River Hard closer, but that would be really dangerous to do. I wouldn't recommend doing it. <clears throat> he's, he's less than 10% now. And we'll just keep doing our chip damage. When he's right side, you can really just sort of keep strafing with him and get your damage in. Get a good stick here. And that's the end of it. So, now we need to think about ammo. So, we need to be max on with a HUD. And we need any heavy that we get from this room. I don't think I did get any. Um, but if you do, you need to seek that out. And then you can uh, skip this room, which you're going to see right now. Always smoke behind cover when you're facing champions. Okay? Because by the time you've smoked, you can be killed. That's no joke. 
So smoke in cover, then go from there. <clears throat> okay, so with this section you have a bunch of lurkers. Be careful because the champions behind you can kill you. Um, which I was in a bit of trouble there, to be honest. That's why I pushed up this area. I want to use the explosive barrel to my advantage. And then take out the final lurker. There's two more lurkers um, in front of the platform above us. In front of us. There's two snipers and one overload. We're going to skip these also, just because it's convenient to do so. Because we really just want to get to the boss fight. As I said, it's just for the clear. Um, but how to safely go about doing that? Well, it can be difficult if you don't time everything correctly. So the first thing you want to do is take out all lurkers, even the ones on the platform section, wherever that's called. Then you want to take out one of the snipers. I would, I would suggest taking out this sniper here. Because there's a chance that he could just get a shot off on you. He'd rather not do that. Shoot the explosive barrel. Yeah, that's that done. Uh, and then we want to sort of go to the platform above us. In front of us. And then we're going to wait for a certain rotation. Because you really need to be on point with this. Because what you need to think about is, is if you just jump over there while the overload sees you, un-invis, if you're not invised, um, he's just going to melt you straight off the bat. So you want to invis here, jump through the platform, then get your dodge, go past the sniper, and then run to the bridge as far as possible. Do another smoke dodge, and if you do it like that, those two smokes will get you through. I wanted to do another one to be safe here though. And that will get you your skip. And then that will be on with the boss fight. So the boss fight itself. There's so much I learned from this. Uh, with his AI and things. Um, his AI is dumb. At times. Um, he won't know where you are. This is a tactic used better for solo than in his team. In team. He'll, he'll react. A little bit different. The three of you. But solo you can sort of get round and sort of uh, use it to your advantage because he will one shot you one blast from his spear or whatever it is uh, will kill you without arc which as I said we've went for the double void because all the ads do double void uh, all the ads do void damage sorry so that's why we're doing that so what I've done there is I've got his attention on the left hand side now you can see he's shooting the left hand side that means he's aggroed where my last position was Right? He's not aggroed on the right side. Now, why have I done that? Well, because we get adds on the right side. Meaning we can deal with the adds right side. Spawn kill them almost. While the boss just keeps shooting left. So, we're basically manipulating where he's shooting. We're controlling it. Um, be careful when lurkers, stalkers push you like that. Because, obviously, the scrape can just come out and one-shot you. you got to be careful. Always be aware of any snipers that you've left up after the spawn phase. Um, scan the room. Be confident that all the ads are down. If he does his arc ring, which he does his arc ring um, once every time he sees you. Um, but later on in the fight, it goes to two arc rings. Right? But right now, it's only one. He won't do his arc ring <clears throat> if he doesn't exactly know where you are, which is also good. We had two, uh, two snipers up here, or two raiders. They weren't actually snipers, um, but they, they are threatening. So I was wanting to take it four. That's one raided arm, just one left. He now has his attention on... The side I was just at, because he saw me at some point. That's fine, we're on the safe side. Always try to fight from the safe side. And the safe side is wherever he's not tuned. And as I said, he won't be aggroed by any enemy fire. Uh, he'll only be aggroed if he, if he actually sees you. And that's not in invis either. If he actually sees you where you're not invised. <clears throat> this is spawn 2, which is on this side now. 
which we do the same thing, we spawn kill them with river horde and a grenade and then dodge invis out there. Any stalkers that are left behind, we do another uh, river horde behind us and that should be the phase. Pay attention to your skill points, uh, to your um, kill count, because that will tell you when you've got your raiders, your stalkers. If you know exactly how many enemies there is, uh, it'll tell you on screen. Especially if you want to know if you're the sniper's dead, because you might not sh be sure, right? Just look out for it on your screen, it'll tell you. That's the first phase done. <clears throat> that's phase That's phase one of it done. Now what you'll find is the boss is just, um, now as I said, he's just shooting at the other side, the last part of call for me. I can do, I can do free damage here. This will then lead us to phase two. This is where you get your, um, where the boss goes immune. He goes behind the door and there's a bunch of ads. You really want a tether for this section. If you don't have your tether, you need to wait for it. Obviously it's tied to the boss's health. We'll do a wither hard at the floor, jump up in the air, then do your tether. Do a grenade as well, another wither hard, keep doing tether. <clears throat> this will control all the ads and funnel them into one section. There'll be one or two ads try to flank you, so be careful of that. Also be careful of void nades. All that stuff. Like right there. Protective light saved me. When you lose protective light, always look on the floor to find for another orb. Or, um, Weaver Horde will may have got you the uh, charge of light as well. Because of plus radius. There's three waves of adds. There's two waves and then the final wave has a champion. On this particular phase. <clears throat> but the idea is you just want to keep rotating around the map. Rotating around the map. With a hard rotate around the map. Actually this is um actually there's only two waves on this phase for some reason. As the champions are responding. Now the champion is deadly. This champion is different to all the other overloads. Because he does solar and he's very aggressive. I would suggest clearing out all adds. Then at the very end you take out the overload. Now, I don't exactly know the best place to take this overload. <laughs> Definitely from range, but you want to get some Wither Horde on him. Um, he pushes me here quite aggressive. I just didn't like it. So we switch. Anytime you don't feel comfortable like that, just switch. I would say the best place is up on these zones here. Up on these uh, raised platforms. Gives you a bit of time for exit. If he starts to push you really hard, you can sort of retreat. Get him on the second stone, we'll do a nade and a weaver horde. He's literally f um, finishable now. Use the pillar on this side for cover, and that's great. Now it's phase two, so this is where the tether, the boss will start to tether you. Now, this tether ramps up, okay? On the second phase, it's not too bad, um, as you'll get a wave of adds after each tether is complete. Okay? There's two tethers on phase two, where he pulls you in, I'm sure we all know this. This mechanic isn't threatening, especially with our loadout. Um, what's threatening is if you get adds while the tether is going on, right? And that's what you need to be really fine of, but on phase two that doesn't happen. Okay? On phase two, you just do the damage until he goes immune. He will then tether you in. Make sure you have a grenade. Make sure you have Wither Horde reloaded. And make sure you have some heavy. Do um, Wither Horde grenade before he teleports you. Then uh, linear fusion shots. <coughs> that will then break his shield. You'll then get a wave of adds on left side. We'll do a Wither Horde shot to spawn kill any enemies we can. And then we go smoke dodge. Again with a wither horde, try and get as many stalkers as possible. Bear in mind, every time you kill them like four stalkers, that's four scrapes spawning. So don't always count wither horde to, you know, to spawn kill them. Like so, but eventually they will despawn. The boss started to push me here, so I noticed to always be cautious of the boss, where he's doing, 
where he's fighting from, what, where is he shooting at. This is more of a patience and a observant run, rather than being fast or, you know, uh, optimizing encounters. It's more about, right, what's happening right now? The boss is shooting left, the ads are coming from right. All that thing, all that sort of stuff you got to think about. <clears throat> so that's phase one of the tether for this for this phase. He'll tether us again. All we need to do is meet that damage requirement. After the phase is after the tether is finished, we'll get our second wave of ads. Which this is now on this side. <clears throat> Same again. We'll uh, with a hard. Try and get the sniper if you can. That's the most important kill on the raider. Same thing applies. We're doing the same techniques as what we've been doing earlier. If you do get a raider um, attacking you like this, which that will happen a lot if you're on the opposite side, as soon as that raider comes to you, smoke dodge. Prepare for him uh, as... If you're not invised, he can just reappear and then snipe you. And if you're not got the right resistances on, um, literally almost kill you, or if not, kill you. Um, so be very careful of those. Now we're just finishing off that phase. Now we're on the final phase, the third phase. We'll do the same thing again. We've a hard on the floor, super in the air. So none of the scrapes can get us. We'll do another weaver hard with a grenade. Keep doing the tether. Be careful, avoid nades. You need to be more mobile than what I was. Directive light was saved us though. <clears throat> and then we can just keep doing the weaver hard. Now when the tether is um, gone, we then need to do a map rotation. Anytime you kill a stalker, if you're not intending on killing the scrape, just run away. Like I said earlier, they have a timer and they will eventually just explode regardless. You'll find Bomber is helping out massively at the boss fight because <clears throat> there's nothing better than having a nade when you're in Viz. Because it's doing, it's doing a lot of damage. Especially that's why Weaverhard works out really well with this. Because you, you're essentially killing all the ads while you're in Viz. But just take, take your time. That is the biggest thing for this. Map rotation... Take your time, always be on your toes if there's any ads that you weren't expecting when you are rotating around. That's the biggest thing. After this wave, there's going to be an Unstoppable Champion. Uh, that can be the hardest phase. It was for me because the Unstoppable Champion roams around and I'm not 100% where the Unstoppable was sort of going. You've really got to keep eyes on where that Unstoppable is. So in the meantime, while you're doing all your weaver horde spawn killing and your grenade and, and what have you, <coughs> you really need to keep an eye on where the unstoppable is. The unstoppable nearly catches me out. Two shots off an unstoppable will kill you. Uh, protective light will save you, for sure, to some extent. But you really need to make um, sure you're keeping an eye on where the unstoppable is. Because the unstoppable will split up from the ads, especially when the ads, when there's less ads, when there's less ads, they they are more spread out, which is ideally more threatening. If there's just a bunch of ads following you, that's fine. You can just grenade them and stuff. But when they're spread out, you could get un unexpected grenades coming at you and all that sort of stuff. Unstoppable pushes to my right, which I was not aware of. Which, as I said, that's why we've got the protective light on. Saving us there with a bit of luck. Yeah, that's the final ad, uh, final ad killed. Now we just need to take the Unstoppable. The Unstoppable's fine when it's just you and the Unstoppable. Not very threatening. It's just when there's a bunch of other ads. But you can't stay stationary. Because, as I said, you could get Void Grenaded. Anything could happen, so... Wasn't getting my crits here, disappointing, that's fine, we'll get some 
heavy on the floor. Make sure you've got a bit of heavy for phase three for the final, um, for the end of the fight, if you like. There's still going to be another two more waves we deal with. There's actually a final wave of ads. Um, if you're on the final wave, if you're on the final 10% uh, HP of the boss, you'll get um, a spawn of lurkers and things. We end up skipping that because we do enough burst damage at the very end to finish him, which I'll explain that. You really don't want to take that final phase. You, you don't need to. You've got. You should have enough da damage output, especially with the amount of heavy. Because you're not using a lot. You'll notice I'm not using a lot of heavy. I'm only using it at critical moments. So this is where we're on the final wave where he tethers you. Okay, yeah, so this is slightly different to phase two because of this. On phase two, the ads are dictated by after every tether phase. Whereas you can get ads while you are tethered, which means they can kill you while you're tethered. The way to control that is to do just to do small chip damage to the boss. You saw that was the first wave. That's linked to boss damage. He won't tether you as long as you do little damage. Right, deal with the waves. Then once the wave is done, you will do enough damage for the boss to tether you. You can then prep your tether with your wither hard, your grenade, all that stuff. <clears throat> you will then uh, need to do more chip damage to be, um, I think it's to be tethered again. And then you get your waves of ads. Or oh, it's, it's one or the other. We'll see it right now. Just finishing this last wave up. You'll also, um, something I haven't discussed is spawn, um, I would say, f controlling the boss a bit more. So you can see he's shooting to the left now, right? Well, you can get him to shoot where you want. You just need to, um, say you want him to shoot on this side. Get him to stomp you. He will then start shooting this side. You can then smoke dodge past him. And then he's out of your hair. Because <clears throat> obviously, if you want to spawn kill adds on the right, you need to have the boss stop shooting right. Because he's a threat. Right. So this is um, our tether here. You get the tether easy. We're still waiting for the second wave of adds. Just say we'll be linked to HP. Well, that is quite dangerous because as you can see he's doing two arc pulls at once. So the boss changes from doing one arc pull to two at this phase. Um, Bungie often do that with the strikes. They ramp up the difficulty towards the end. Just what they do. What I'm wanting to do is spawn flip him. Not spawn flip him but um, basically have him focused on this side. Did you see what I just done? So I made him stomp by going close and then retreat. Then you smoke dodge past. Then you're safe to spawn kill the odds. There's a lot to remember this with, with the odds, and once you've mastered that, it's not as difficult. Not as um, random. I saw that I got two raiders, which is excellent because th those are really dangerous. The lurkers are dangerous, but if you run away from them, they're not so much. We have a hard run away, you know. You will also get a solar shield. This is why you want solar on for the fight, because it'd be a nightmare without. <clears throat> we'll deal with the solar captain once all the ads are killed. I was just scanning the room, make sure everything's taken out. He's pushing me aggressive, didn't like it. Plus he's spawned in a tether. So I retreated from that. We'll break his shield, then we'll wither hard and then run away. Uh, Wither Horde will kill the knight once he's unshielded. That's the knight taken out. The boss is on the side. I want him, which is perfect. This is where I want to do damage. Now, the, the final two waves have ended. But there is one more phase, but we're not going to do that. 
Um, we just need to get him to tether us again, I believe. This is the final tether. Uh, which is not bad at all, because there's no ads. We've dealt with all the ads. And now what we want to do is situate the boss for damage. Do not start damaging the boss until you are ready. There's a really good place I've found where you can do really good burst damage. Because the boss isn't tangy at all. Because the problem is if you don't do enough damage, you will spawn in a wave of adds and not be able to finish the fight. And you may die because you've overcommitted to damage. So when you are going to overcommit, make sure you do it good, make sure you do it well, and make sure you have the boss in the right position. This is what I wanted to do, because um, I'd seen the boss sort of backs off in the middle of this side. This is where I wanted him. Just because it's easy crit, it's easy boss damage. We'll see. Plus he's not focusing on me. We'll do our damage. We have a hard grenade, linear. I hear the ad wave, he ducks for some reason. I don't know why. I guess he's spawning ads, I just use my tether. Finish him off with Tether, and then that's the, that's the solo GM, do you know what I mean? And you avoid the very last phase of uh, Lurkers and things. That was the solo GM on it. It is a pain, but that's my view on it. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.